Good morning ladies and gentlemen, you have the right to remain well entertained. People that do autopsies, what's the weirdest thing that you have found that didn't have anything to do with the person's death? An 88-year-old grandma died of carbon monoxide poisoning. During the autopsy we couldn't open the back of the cranium. After much drilling we realized that her cranium was around 3 to 4 centimeters thick all the way around, leaving her with the smallest brain on a grown woman I've ever seen. She was fully functioning and never seemed affected by it in the slightest. I've never seen anything like it since. Sorry I haven't managed to reply to all questions. I never expected anyone to find my autopsy stories interesting. I knew she functioned well until her death because she ran a soft cheese making business with her daughters. She died when the gas tank used to heat the milk leaked carbon monoxide into the room and she passed out and died. One of her daughters also passed out but her face was close to the space under the door and fresh air came in, enough to prevent her from dying. I asked the family if she or they had known of her condition and no one had any idea. Physically there was nothing remarkable. No deformities at all visible externally, neither in body nor face. We included the information in the autopsy report but since it wasn't related to the cause of death it wasn't investigated further. Just for clarification, I'm female with a background in forensics and profiling. Hope this helps. While completing the post-autopsy repair for a gentleman, I found a plastic ladle tucked under the ribs. It was probably left by some poor autopsy technician who got yelled at for losing the good ladle. I offered to send it back to the coroner, but they never returned my calls. What is the purpose of a ladle for autopsies? You use it to collect fluid collections, effusions, for a measuring jug. Someone with heart failure can get fluid buildup in their pleural cavities, around the lungs, for example, sometimes several liters. Pennies. Hundreds of pennies, nearly $6 worth inside the skin all over the arms and legs. Deceased was a hermit, lived alone, ordered out for every meal. Apparently he'd been surgically implanting pennies in his skin for years. No ducking clue why. This has haunted me the most out of all the posts so far. Other causes of death, impending ones. Malignancies that weren't diagnosed, hepatitis, occult bleeding, etc. Once found full-blown metastatic stomach cancer in a college kid that died in a bar fight that escalated, it was pretty remarkable. I don't know why that hadn't occurred to me, but it's super unsettling to think about now, haha. My cause of death might be chillin' with me right now. Thanks, you slash dead antelopes. Elderly pensioner died alone in his home. Not suspicious at all. Small mobile phone, flip phone, found in his rectum. No explanation ever determined. My karma has been multiplied by five. Thanks so much for the gold and the other rewards I don't know the name of. It's very exciting. How would he charge it once the battery dies? Oh man. Okay one time we had an autopsy on a guy who had died abroad whilst on holiday. He'd already had an autopsy in his country of death. He needed another autopsy in his home country before his death could be registered, so that was our job. He had been embalmed and repatriated to us. Obviously by the time we received his body, his brain had already been removed and dissected, and the skull sutured closed. My colleague reopened the skull as we weren't sure of autopsy procedures in the country of death. The skull cavity was stuffed with underpants. Wow, I've got a lot of stories for this one. We once had a homeless dude who OD'd on opiates, this comes in a lot. During the external exam, we removed his pants and they were just full of bacon. Like, at least 40 packs of bacon. Turns out he had shoplifted a ton of it then shot up in some run-down house and died with it all in his pants. It was pretty shocking. We also had a guy who took a bullet to the back of his head, execution style and after the x-rays determined the bullet was not in his head anymore, we couldn't find the exit wound anywhere. Once we took out the brain, we discovered it exited perfectly out of one of his nostrils leaving no trace of an external exit wound. One my friend does this autopsies and he said that he found 24 screws in the large intestine of a 75 year old woman. The weirdest part is she died of a heart attack while, in the shower. There was no possible explanation other than she was suffering from pica. What's pica? It's a psychological disorder characterized by an appetite for substances that are largely non-nutritive and unedible. A professor was explaining to us the brain's ability to compensate and said there was a case, I believe the person had died of old age, of someone missing an entire hemisphere of the brain. In its place was one big tumor. There were no signs of symptoms of this throughout the patient's lifetime. 
I work in neurosurgery and most often these patients with huge ginormous brain tumors have no major symptoms. Usually the most is headache, or every so often we get vision changes as a symptom. But for example, we had a girl fall and get a concussion so they did imaging and found a mass over a large region of her brain. Had she not had that accident, she may have not found the tumor until much later. Another time we had a patient who only found out about a large tumor after a routine eye exam. Another patient had imaging done after a minor car accident and found a large tumor. I always have these deep existential thoughts during or after these types of cases. Aneurysms too. Five years ago an autopsy I viewed the patient was put down to have died from post-surgical complications from a colostomy. Infection lead to sepsis and ended with MOF. When they began the examination and looked they found some surgical tweezers left behind which was attributed to being cause of the infection because of how tucked away they were. I am unaware of what happened afterwards but it was definitely referred higher. As if I wasn't already afraid of surgery. This makes it so much worse. You would think that if you were suffering from such a terrible infection after a surgery, they would do everything possible, including take x-rays, to try and figure out how to help you and also cover their own asses post-surgery. Incidental finding of a toothpick lodged in the small intestine. Wonder how much pain that person felt. My dad accidentally swallowed a toothpick that hadn't properly been removed from his food and it poked a hole in the lining of his stomach. He had awful stomach pain for months. Doctors thought it was stomach cancer until they finally discovered it. Spoke with a pathologist at a conference, during her training at the medical examiner's office, they were doing an autopsy on a body that was found by a river. They did a CT and something looked funny about his gut. When they opened him up, his stomach moved, it was a snake that had burrowed inside his body, it struck and bit one of the techs before they realized what was going on. This reminds me of autopsy, room 4. It's a short story by Stephen King. Basically, a guy is bitten by a snake that renders him completely paralyzed and everyone thinks he's dead. They finally find the mark on his inner thigh the snake came out of his pants and struck out at someone from the bag. But he laid there and listened to the entire prep of them about to crack open his ribcage. Creepy story, I highly recommend it. UK gang member's mother died of a heart attack during a home invasion, aggregated burglary, 87 years old. Gang had burst in looking for drugs and money. No signs of assault but the circumstances required a full examination to be sure nothing suspicious had occurred. During the post-mortem two ounces of smack found in her anus. Brain aneurysm in a late 20s girl. Had a tattoo directly above her pubic region that said stay off the grass. Only tattoo on her body. Also had a full-blown trichobazor, same patient. We saved it. No history of mental health issues or seeking treatment for any mental health disorders. Just enjoyed eating her own hair. Running into the occasional penis pump implant was also a fun one. Should we all be terrified of brain aneurysms now? Are you not already afraid of them? My forensic medicine lectures took place in the department's museum of oddities. There are plenty of interesting items on display, but one particularly strange display caught my eye. It was an unlabeled cardboard box with 20-ish thin metal bars 10 centimeters, around 4 inches, long. One of the pathologists explained that the random pieces of metal were actually spoon handles which were found in a young woman's stomach. The remaining portion of the spoons was melted away by stomach acid. The woman was a patient in a psychiatric hospital in the 50s 60s and evidently had a tendency to swallow spoons, but her unusual diet had nothing to do with her cause of death, can't exactly remember what it was. On a more humorous note, the museum also features a variety of strange tattoos. My favorite was a tattoo on the left upper thigh of a soldier which read, Nua fur damen, i.e. ladies only. What would have been your answer or question? Leave it in the comments below. Slap that like and subscribe button for more, and check out the link in the video description for even more answers. Peace out, and catch you in the next video.